everyone, my name is Melinda and this is an introductory video on topological data analysis in Julia. We are going to use Irene for our computations. Here's the GitHub page, which has some additional documentation if anyone's interested. There are a lot of software options for doing topological data analysis. I think that Irene is a nice one because it is relatively easy to use. It accepts multiple input formats and it has multiple output options. So it's a good first thing to try if you're not sure what to use. Let's also get some data so we can work through an example. We're going to use the Philly tree map, which is locations of trees in Philadelphia. And I've set it so that we're looking just at the trees, not the empty planting sites. So it looks like we have close to 60,000 trees. And some of them are actually in outlying areas that are pretty far from Philadelphia itself. So just for this introductory example, let's narrow down on a specific region. So look at Old City. All right, so now we're down to 1,045 trees. So just looking at the map, we can already see some interesting features. So it looks like we have areas where there are trees all around, but the trees don't extend across the whole interior. So that's the type of feature that topological data analysis is really good at detecting. So that's going to be our goal. We're going to find a cycle of trees that encircles some space. And there can be more than one cycle that has the same topological information. And the output is just going to give you one of those. Just something to be a little careful of when you're doing your analysis. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We would export the data here. I have already done that, so I have my CSV file. The other thing you might need to do if you have not used Irene before is to install the package. So you would say using package and then package add Irene. Or you could choose a different package by changing the name here if you needed one of the other ones. I already have Irene up and running, so I'm just going to comment that out. So for our packages, we want to use a CSV package because our data is in a CSV file. And at least initially, I'll put it into a data frame. And we will use plots to visualize our data. And then, of course, Irene. Let's go ahead and load the data. It is in a CSV file, which is called tree export CSV. And at least initially, I'm going to put that into a data frame, which I will call trees. I've already taken a look through this, but just so we can take a brief look together, let's look at the first three rows. So it did not print all of the columns, but it looks pretty much like this. We are going to use the location information, which is in the first two columns. If I literally just look at the first two columns, that's actually another data frame. At this point, we're ready to start working with an array. I could just convert this to an array, or the other option is that if you extract one column at a time, that gives you an array. So I could pull out the first column and then the second column and put those together. And I will call that tree x, y, because it has our x and y coordinates. Let's go ahead and plot that just to make sure everything looks appropriate. So I'll do a scatter plot of our first column, which has our x coordinates, and then our y coordinates. I don't need a legend, but I will do a title. And I will label our axes. Okay, that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and get started with the analysis. So we will call Irene and I have to give it the locations of those trees, which is in tree XY. 
we have an array set up so that each tree is its own row. Irene is expecting an array where each point, in this case a tree, makes up its own column. So at some point, might as well do it now, we have to transpose that. And then Irene also accepts more than one kind of input. So I'm gonna tell it which kind of input we're giving it, which in this case is a point cloud because we're just giving it the coordinates of a bunch of points. So I will save this output. And I don't actually need all of the information in the output. I wanna start off by looking at a summary of the cycles. So that information will be contained in a barcode which comes from our output. And I need to tell it that we want dimension one features. So if I had said dimension zero, that would have given us information on connected components. So trees that are really close to each other. Dimension one gives us the cycles. If you had a data set where higher dimensional features make sense, you could have computed those as well. This by default only computed up to a maximum dimension of one, but you could change the maximum dimension by passing it as an additional argument to this function here. But we're fine with the default. So here's our barcode. It found 192 cycles. And then for each cycle, it gave us two numbers. What are those? So what happened is to look for cycles, it connected nearby trees. And what does nearby mean? So in other words, how close do two points have to be to get connected? You choose some cutoff distance that determines when points get connected and when they don't. But we didn't provide that cutoff distance. So what happened was the algorithm actually checked for us and it gave us the range of cutoff values that work for each cycle. If the cutoff was too small, then nothing gets connected and you don't get a cycle of trees. If the cutoff is too large, then all of the trees seem close together and you don't see the empty space anymore. So there's a range that's just right for each cycle. And then we got back the interval in the output. So some of these cycles are not very robust in the sense that this range is really small. Let's look at the largest range, which will give us the most persistent cycle. I can compute the persistence by taking the difference of those two columns. Get something like this. And I want the most persistent cycles index. So I'll take the argmax of the persistence. Looks like cycle number 115 is our winner. Let's take a look at some information about that cycle. So it's going to be in this class and we'll look at a representative in that class. So this has to come from the Irene output again. And I tell it that I want cycle number 115. So that's going to be our class, which is in our MPC index. And then I have to tell it the dimension again. So dimension one, because we're looking at the cycles. It actually gives us the pairs of trees that get connected together to make that cycle. I want to just see the individual trees. So I will ask for the unique values in that array. So these are our trees. So most persistent cycle trees. And I can get the x, y coordinates of those trees. And I will just call that most persistent cycle x, y. And let's add those onto the scatter plot in a different color so we can see what the cycle looks like. Okay, so we've added this most persistent cycle in an orange color. So this is what we found. All right, that finishes up our introductory example. Hope that was helpful in just getting you started. Thanks for watching, bye.